Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In this video, we embark on an illuminating journey through the lives of the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. Each apostle has a unique story of transformation, faith, and service, contributing to the rich tapestry of biblical history. Join us in this captivating exploration as we delve into their experiences, challenges, and unwavering dedication to Jesus. Along the way, we'll pose thought-provoking questions to deepen your understanding and engage you in the narrative. With the desire to provide valuable content and stimulate a spirit of learning, we will divide this topic into two parts. This video is the first part which focuses on the first six Jesus' disciples, including Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, and Nathaniel. This video promises to inspire, educate, and deepen your connection with the timeless teachings of the Bible. Let's get started. To begin with, we examine Peter the Apostle's journey before and after following Jesus' call. Question 1. What was Peter's profession before following Jesus? A. Carpenter B. Shepherd C. Fisherman D. Tax Collector You get 10 seconds. That's C, Fisherman. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Peter, initially a fisherman, left his profession to become a disciple of Jesus. His journey symbolizes a transformative shift from worldly pursuits to a spiritual calling. Question 2. What miracle event did Simon Peter witness that led his decision to follow Jesus as recorded in Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11? A. The Transfiguration B. The Feeding of the 5,000 C. The Sermon on the Mount D. The Miraculous Catch of Fish You get 10 seconds. That's D, the miraculous catch of fish. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Witnessing the abundant catch of fish, Peter recognized Jesus' divine power. This miracle marked a pivotal moment inspiring Peter to forsake his occupation and follow Jesus. Question 3. When Jesus was walking on the water, how did Simon Peter demonstrate his faith? A. Hid in the boat. B. Observed from a distance. C. Prayed for safety. D. Requested to walk on water. You get 10 seconds. That's D, requested to walk on water. Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 to 28. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Peter demonstrated his faith by stepping out of the boat and walking on water towards Jesus. Though he briefly faltered, his initial boldness reflected trust in Jesus' power. Question 4. Who did Peter say Jesus was when Jesus asked, Who do you say I am? A. A great prophet. B. The Son of God. C. A wise teacher. D. 
the king of Jews. You get 10 seconds. That's B, the Son of God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This declaration recognized Jesus as the Messiah and the divine Son of God. Question 5. What did Jesus predict about Peter? A. Peter's calming the storm. B. Peter's walking on water. C. Peter's denial of him. D. Peter's fishing prowess. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Peter's denial of him. Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 to 34. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. This prediction highlights both Jesus' knowledge of future events and the human frailty even among his closest disciples. Remember to hit that subscribe button and join our community to stay updated on all the amazing content we have planned. Question 6. What did Peter do when he realized he had denied Jesus? A. He rejoiced. B. He wept bitterly. C. He ran away. D. He argued with the priests. You get 10 seconds. That's B, he wept bitterly. Luke chapter 22, verses 54 to 62. And he went outside and wept bitterly. This moment reflects the depth of Peter's remorse and the human struggle with weakness and failure. Question seven, who did announce to Peter about Jesus' resurrection? A, Mary Magdalene. B, Martha. C. Anna. D. Elizabeth. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Mary Magdalene. Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. Mary Magdalene was the first to encounter the risen Christ and was instructed by Jesus to inform the disciples, including Peter, about his resurrection. Question 8. After the resurrection, how did Simon Peter and other disciples recognize Jesus when he appeared in Galilee? A. By his voice. B. By his appearance. C. By the wounds in his hands and feet. D. By a miracle of a large catch of fish. You get 10 seconds. That's D, by a miracle of a large catch of fish. John chapter 21, verses 4 to 7. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. This miraculous catch of fish reminded them of a similar event during Jesus' ministry, leading them to realize that it was the Lord. Question 9. After Jesus' resurrection, how many times did he ask Peter if he loved him? 
A. Three times. B. Five times. C. Seven times. D. Nine times. You get 10 seconds. That's A, three times. John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. After Jesus' resurrection, he asked Peter three times if he loved him. This mirrored Peter's earlier three denials of Jesus, allowing Peter to reaffirm his love and commitment to the Lord. Question 10. What did Jesus predict about the manner of Peter's death? A. Be exiled. B. Be stoned. C. Be crucified. D. Die of natural causes. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Be crucified. John chapter 21, verses 18 to 19. When you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. The phrase, stretch out your hands, is traditionally understood as a reference to crucifixion. This prediction foresaw Peter's martyrdom and conveyed the idea that Peter's ultimate allegiance to Christ would lead him to endure suffering. Simon Peter, the foremost disciple of Jesus, played a pivotal role in the unfolding narrative of the Gospels. As the first disciple chosen, he witnessed transformative events like the Transfiguration and the miraculous catch of fish. Known for his impulsive nature, Peter's memorable moments include walking on water and his threefold denial of Jesus. Besides, his journey also encompasses redemption, symbolized by Jesus instructing him to feed my sheep after the resurrection. Our second exploration centers on Andrew the Apostle's transformation journey. Question 11. Where did Andrew come from? A. Bethsaida B. Jericho C. Capernaum D. Bethany You get 10 seconds. That's A, Bethsaida, John chapter 1, verse 44. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. This detail highlights the geographical origins of the disciples and their connection to the region where Jesus began his ministry. Question 12. Before following Jesus, Andrew was a disciple of which religious figure? A, Sadducees. B. John the Baptist C. Pharisees D. Zealots You get 10 seconds. That's B. John the Baptist John chapter 1, verses 35 to 40. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. This connection emphasizes the transition from John the Baptist's ministry to Jesus' ministry and the role of John the Baptist in preparing the way for the coming of Jesus. Question 13. Who did Andrew first tell about Jesus as recorded in John chapter 1? A. His brother Peter B. His father C. His friend Nathaniel D. The high priest You get 10 seconds.
That's A, his brother Peter. John chapter 1, verses 40 to 42. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Andrew's act exemplifies the natural inclination to share profound spiritual experiences with close family members. Besides, Andrew's role in bringing Peter to Jesus is a pivotal moment in the formation of the core disciples. Question 14. What did Andrew and Peter do immediately after Jesus called them? A. Went to the synagogue. B. Asked for proof. C. Followed Jesus immediately. D. Went back to their home. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Followed Jesus immediately. Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 to 20. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. This swift response illustrates their willingness to leave their livelihood and follow Jesus, signifying their commitment and faith in him as their new teacher and leader. Question 15. During the event of feeding of the 5,000, who did Peter find? A. A scholar reading a scroll. B. A carpenter with a toolbox. C. A shepherd with a herd of sheep. D. A boy with five loaves and two fish. You get 10 seconds. That's D, a boy with five loaves and two fish. John chapter 6, verses 8 to 9. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up, Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? During the feeding of the 5,000, Andrew is the one who brings the boy with the loaves and fishes to Jesus, showcasing resourcefulness. Question 16. Which apostle is always mentioned alongside Andrew in the list of the twelve? A. John B. Peter C. Judas Iscariot D. Philip You get ten seconds. That's B, Peter, Matthew, chapter 10, verses 2 to 4, Mark, chapter 3, verses 16 to 19, and Luke, chapter 6, verses 14 to 16. The apostle Peter is always mentioned alongside Andrew in the list of the twelve. This close association between Peter and Andrew reflects their familial relationship and their shared experiences as disciples of Jesus. Question 17. Andrew was a part of the group of disciples that Jesus sent out in pairs to do what? A. Preach and heal. B. Build churches. C. Gather food. D. Collect taxes. You get 10 seconds. That's A, preach and heal. Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. This mission demonstrated the collaborative nature of their ministry and empowered disciples to share the message of salvation while manifesting God's compassion through healing. Question 18. 
During the Passover, who did announce to Andrew that some Greeks would like to see Jesus? A. Peter B. Philip C. John D. James You get 10 seconds. That's B, Philip, John chapter 12, verses 20 to 22. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. The detail emphasizes Andrew's important role as a trusted confidant and intermediary, as well as highlights the respect and trust placed in Andrew by his fellow disciples. Question 19. Andrew and which other disciple asked Jesus about the signs of the end times? A. Peter, James, and Philip. B. Peter, James, and Matthew. C. Peter, James, and John. D. Peter, James, and Thomas. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Peter, James, and John. Mark chapter 13, verses 3 to 4. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Question 20. What is Andrew's name in Greek, and what does it mean? A. Rock B. Supplanter C. Son of God D. Manly or brave. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Manly or brave. Andrew's name in Greek is Andreas, meaning manly or brave. This name reflects qualities that align with Andrew's character in the Gospels, where he is often portrayed as resourceful, open-minded, and courageous in bringing others to Jesus. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, emerges as a quietly influential figure among Jesus' disciples. While not always in the spotlight, Andrew's contributions are marked by a spirit of inclusivity, an approachable demeanor, and a willingness to connect people to Jesus. This highlights his supportive role within the disciples' community, as well as makes him crucial within the disciples' community. In the upcoming questions, we unravel St. James's progression from a fisherman to a close disciple of Jesus. Question 21. Who was the father of James? A. Joseph B. Zebedee C. Simeon D. Zechariah You get 10 seconds. That's B. Zebedee. Matthew chapter 4, verse 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee. The mention of Zebedee adds depth to the narrative, enriching the understanding of James's identity and background. Question 22. Who was James's brother among the 12 disciples? A. John B. Philip C. Nathaniel D. Matthew You get 10 seconds.
That's A, John. Matthew chapter 4, verse 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. James's brother among the twelve disciples was John. This familial relationship is significant as it highlights the close bond between the two disciples and their shared experiences as followers of Jesus. Question 23. What was James doing when Jesus met him for the first time? A. Mending sails. B. Preparing nets. C. Counting fish. D. Fishing with a spear. You get 10 seconds. That's B, preparing nets. Matthew chapter four, verse 21. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them. This detail demonstrates that John and James was a fisherman before becoming one of Jesus' disciples. It highlights the transformative power of Christ's call on people's lives, redirecting their purpose. Question 24. Which title did Jesus give to James and John? A. Bonerges. B. Bayonerges. C. Bonergas. D. Bonarges. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Bonerges. Mark chapter 3, verse 17. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, to them he gave the name Boanerges. Question 25. What does Boanerges mean? A. Sons of Thunder. B. The Quiet Ones. C. The Gentle Hearted. D. Disciples of Calmness. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Sons of Thunder. Mark chapter 3, verse 17. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John, to them he gave the name Bonerges, which means Sons of Thunder. The title, Bonerges, meaning Sons of Thunder, suggests James and John's fervent and passionate nature. Question 26. Which event did James witness along with Peter and John, making them the only disciples present? A. The Last Supper B. The Raising of Lazarus C. The Transfiguration D. The Feeding of the Five Thousand You get 10 seconds. That's C, the Transfiguration. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 8. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. James, along with Peter and John, witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus. This exclusive experience emphasized their unique role among the disciples, providing a glimpse of Jesus' divine glory and affirming their place in the inner circle of his followers. Question 27. What did James and his brother request Jesus as recorded in Mark chapter 10? A. Seek permission to lead the disciples. B. Grant to sit in his glory. C. Ask for the power to perform miracles. D. Request for great wealth and prosperity. You get 10 seconds.
That's B, grant to sit in his glory. Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 37. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. Question 28. However, according to Matthew chapter 20, who requested positions of honor in Jesus' kingdom for James and John? A. The kings. B. The angels. C. James's mother. D. James's father. You get 10 seconds. That's C, James's mother. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 20 to 21. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. This incident provides insight into the disciples' understanding of Jesus' kingdom and their aspirations within it. Question 29. What was James and John's response when a Samaritan village rejected Jesus? A. Prayed for salvation. B. Asked for Jesus' appearance. C. Left the village and traveled to the next one. D rebuked and asked for fire from heaven. You get 10 seconds. That's D, rebuked and asked for fire from heaven. Mark chapter nine, verses 51 to 56. And he sent messengers on ahead, who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? This impulsive response reflects their misunderstanding of Jesus' mission and highlights the tension between their zeal and Jesus' message of love and reconciliation. Question 30. Which event marked the martyrdom of James, the son of Zebedee? A. The crucifixion. B. The stoning in Jerusalem. C. The great persecution in Rome. D. The beheading by Herod. You get 10 seconds. That's D. The beheading by Herod. Acts chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. This event underscores the risks early disciples faced and highlights James's commitment to his faith. James is a significant figure among Jesus' disciples. He is known for his involvement in key events such as the Transfiguration and being one of the select few taken to the Holy Mountain. Displaying leadership within the disciples group, James embodies dedication and commitment to Jesus' teachings. Besides, his partnership with his brother reflects a cohesive and supportive dynamic within the Twelve. Though in some situations, James also showed moments of doubt and human weakness, Overall, he contributed to the multifaceted narrative of discipleship, showcasing a blend of faith, loyalty, and shared experiences that contribute to the broader understanding of Jesus' ministry. Next, 
let's delve into the riddles of John, another close disciple of Jesus. Question 31. How is John often referred to in the Gospel of John? A. The Elder Disciple B. The Faithful Apostle C. The Beloved Teacher D. The Beloved Disciple You get 10 seconds. That's D, the beloved disciple. John chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. This term emphasizes the close and special relationship between John and Jesus. It symbolizes the deep bond of love and trust that characterized their connection throughout Jesus' ministry and beyond. Question 32. Where did John first encounter Jesus? A. Dead Sea B. Sea of Galilee C. Red Sea D. Mediterranean Sea You get 10 seconds. That's B, Sea of Galilee. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 21. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James son of Zebedee and his brother John. The geographic setting by the Sea of Galilee is significant as it became a central location for many events in the Gospels related to Jesus' ministry and interactions with his disciples. Question 33. Where did John sit during the Last Supper when Jesus revealed the betrayer? A. Behind Jesus. B. Next to James. C. Next to the betrayer. D. Next to Jesus. You get 10 seconds. That's D, next to Jesus. John, chapter 13, verse 23. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. During the Last Supper, John's position next to Jesus emphasized their close bond. Question 34. Where did Jesus lead John, Peter, and James to pray before his arrest? A, Mount Sinai. B, Mount Hermon. C. Gethsemane D. The Red Sea You get 10 seconds. That's C. Gethsemane Matthew chapter 26 verses 36 to 37 then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. This location holds significant importance in the events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and is a powerful symbol of prayer and surrender. Question 35. During Jesus' crucifixion, what task did John receive from him? A. Carry the cross. B. Guard the tomb. C. Take care of Mary. D. Announce the resurrection. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Take care of Mary. John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. 
When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. This event highlights the close bond between Jesus and John, demonstrating a profound level of trust and responsibility given to John at a critical time. Question 36. What book did John write while in exile on the island of Patmos? A. The Gospel of John B. The Epistles of John C. The Book of Revelation D. The Acts of the Apostles You get 10 seconds. That's C, the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John while he was in exile on the island of Patmos. This visionary and prophetic book provides insights into the end times, spiritual warfare, and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. Question 37. Who told John to write the book of Revelation? A. Jesus B. Angel C. Satan D. Nobody You get 10 seconds. That's A. Jesus Revelation chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 The revelation from Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. Jesus instructed John to write the book of Revelation. This divine directive signifies the revelatory nature of the content and emphasizes John's role as a conduit for conveying prophetic messages. Question 38. What was another challenge that John had to face as recorded in Acts? A. Famine B. Betrayal C. Imprisonment D. Shipwreck You get 10 seconds. That's C, imprisonment. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. As a disciple of Jesus, John faced various challenges that tested his faith and commitment. And imprisonment was one of the challenges that John had faced and overcome. Question 39. According to Acts chapter 4, why Peter and John were arrested by the religious authorities. A. They condemned the religious leaders. B. They discussed the role of faith in healing. C. They preached about the importance of almsgiving. D. They proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus. You get 10 seconds. That's D. They proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. John faced imprisonment along with Peter for boldly proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. This underscores the hostility early disciples encountered as they spread the gospel as well as highlights their unwavering commitment to Jesus. Question 40. Why the religious leaders could not reject the answer of John and Peter in the Sanhedrin? A. 
Holy Spirit descended. B. They fear Jesus. C. They love John and Peter. D. Many people witness that miraculous event. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Many people witness that miraculous event. Acts chapter 4 verses 14 to 17. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. The religious leaders couldn't reject John and Peter's answer in the Sanhedrin because many people had witnessed the miraculous healing of a man, making it undeniable. John, the brother of James, also known as the disciple whom Jesus loved, occupies a central and intimate role among the chosen twelve. John's loyalty and deep connection with Jesus were shown in many crucial events, such as the Last Supper and the Crucifixion. Besides, John's insightful witness provided a unique lens into Jesus' teachings and miracles. This contributes to a profound understanding of Jesus' life and emphasizes the enduring themes of love and discipleship. Our next questions revolve around Philip the Apostle's journey when becoming one of close Jesus' disciples. Question 41. Where did Philip first encounter Jesus? A. Galilee B. Nazareth C. Jerusalem D. Genesaret You get 10 seconds. That's A. Galilee John chapter 1, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Galilee was a significant region in Jesus' ministry, and it is where many of his disciples, including Philip, were initially called to follow him. Question 42. Who did Philip first tell about Jesus? A. John B. Peter C. Nathaniel D. James You get 10 seconds. That's C. Nathaniel. John chapter 1 verse 45. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael was the first one whom Philip excitedly shared the news of finding the Messiah with. This interaction led to Nathanael's encounter with Jesus, during which Jesus displayed supernatural knowledge about Nathanael. Question 43. What did Philip do when Jesus asked him about feeding the multitude during the event of feeding of the 5,000? A. Started distributing the little food they had. B. Went to the nearby town to buy provisions. C. Suggested finding a place for people to rest. D. Calculated money to buy enough bread. You get 10 seconds. That's D, calculated money to, to buy enough bread. John chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. This response highlights Philip's initial focus on practical constraints 
and sets the stage for Jesus to demonstrate his miraculous power by multiplying the available loaves and fish to satisfy the crowd. Question 44. What did Philip request to see from Jesus as recorded in John? A. A heavenly vision. B. The Father. C. A sign and wonder. D. The promised land. You get 10 seconds. That's B, the Father. John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Philip expressed a deep desire to witness the Father directly. His request reflected a sincere yearning for spiritual revelation and understanding. Question 45. Who did Philip go with when returning to Jerusalem after Jesus taken up into heaven? A. Some Greeks. B. Peter, John, James, and Andrew. C. Twelve Jesus' disciples. D. Eleven Jesus' disciples except for Judas Iscariot. You get ten seconds. That's D. Eleven disciples. Jesus except for Judas Iscariot. Acts chapter 1 verses 12 to 13. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. After Jesus' ascension, Philip returned to Jerusalem with the other eleven disciples, excluding Judas Iscariot. Philip, one of the chosen twelve disciples, plays a distinctive role in the gospel narrative. Philip was not much in the spotlight among the twelve disciples. However, based on little information in the Bible context, he was prominent with a pragmatic and inquisitive nature. In particular, Philip's practical mindset surfaces when he questions the feasibility of providing sufficient food during the miraculous event of feeding of the 5,000. Despite initial skepticism, Philip witnesses Jesus' divine provision. In conclusion, Philip's willingness to explore questions and engage with diverse perspectives adds depth to the discipleship narrative, portraying Philip as a thoughtful and open-minded follower of Christ. In the last questions, we investigate Nathaniel's evolution to become a close apostle of Jesus, Question 46. What was Nathanael's initial reaction to hearing about Jesus from Nazareth? A. Skeptical. B. Overjoyed. C. Indifferent. D. Fearful. You get 10 seconds. That's A, skeptical, John chapter 1, verse 46. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathaniel initially expressed skepticism upon hearing about Jesus from Nazareth, questioning if anything good could come from there. Question 47. What did Jesus say about when Nathaniel came to see him? A, he is a man of great faith. B. He knows the law very well. C. He will be a leader among his people. D. Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. You get 10 seconds.
That's D. Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. John chapter 1 verse 47. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus' statement reflected his perception of Nathanael's sincerity and integrity, recognizing his genuine character. Question 48. What did Nathanael acknowledge Jesus to be after the revelation? A. A wise man. B. The Son of God. C. A great teacher. D. A miracle worker. You get 10 seconds. That's B, the Son of God. John, chapter 1, verses 48 to 49. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Nathanael's acknowledgement of Jesus as the Son of God demonstrates the transformative impact of encountering Jesus and the profound revelation of his divine identity. Question 49. What prophecy did Jesus refer to when he spoke of Nathanael? A. The suffering servant. B. The coming of Elijah. C. The stone the builders rejected. D. The opening of the heavens and angels. You get 10 seconds. That's D, the opening of the heavens and angels. John chapter 1, verse 51. He then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This prophetic imagery signifies a divine connection between heaven and earth through Jesus, highlighting his unique role in God's redemptive plan. Question 50. What is Nathanael also known as in the Gospels? A. Bartholomew B. Matthew C. Thaddeus D. Matthias You get 10 seconds. That's A, Bartholomew. Nathaniel being known as Bartholomew is not explicitly mentioned in the Gospels, but it is a tradition based on the lists of the apostles in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where Philip and Bartholomew are often mentioned together. Nathaniel, another disciple of Jesus, contributes a distinct perspective to the discipleship circle. Firstly, Nathanael's encounter with Jesus, described as an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, showcases his sincerity and honesty. Additionally, as a witness to Jesus' miracles and teachings, Nathanael adds a layer of authenticity to the disciples' experiences. Though not always in the spotlight, his presence underscores the diversity within the discipleship community, emphasizing that each disciple including Nathaniel, plays a unique and cherished role in the unfolding tapestry of the gospel narrative. Oh wow, what an incredible exploration of the journey of the first six apostles before and after becoming Jesus Christ's disciples. I hope you found this journey as enlightening and inspiring as I did. Now, it's your turn to share your experience. Drop a comment below. Let us know how many questions you answered correctly and share the profound lessons you've drawn from the apostles' extraordinary stories. If you've enjoyed this quiz, don't forget to spread the word. Share this video with your friends and family, inviting them to join in this enlightening exploration. Together, 
we can foster a deeper understanding and appreciation for the timeless teachings through the stories of six Jesus' apostles. Thank you for being a part of this incredible adventure. Let's keep the conversation going, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep learning. Until our next episode about the remaining six Jesus' disciples is released, stay curious, stay connected, and continue to seek the profound wisdom embedded in the scriptures.